the past paper questions now and this is the one that we've seen most recently and it's there's two parts to it the first part really is to calculate the cost of the remaining links in the network it gives us an example of how to do that and of course that is the bandwidth calculation that we looked at uh, earlier in the activities so we're going to do that job first and the easiest way i find to do this is just to stick it in a little table and go through it so these are all the remaining links that we haven't worked out a to c a to d b to d c to e and d to e we're going to go through and work out each of those in the sum so the first job is what's the sum so a to c are Connections, our connection bandwidth is one megabit, so that's always going to be a million. And the A to C link is 100 kilobits, so that's 100,000. So it's a million divided by 100,000 gives us a cost of 10. A to D then is a million divided by 200,000, which gives us a cost of 5. B to D is a million divided by 250,000, giving us a cost of 4. C to E is a million divided by 50,000, giving us a cost of 20, and D to E is a million divided by 500,000, giving us a cost of two. Let's look at the mark scheme for that. As you can see, we've matched up, but look at the marks. Two marks for all correct, one mark for three or more. So you need to get over half of those right just to get even one mark for this. Ideally, you wanna be looking to get all of them. It's a reasonably simple calculation. Now, leaving that on the screen for us a minute, because our next question is about calculating the shortest route between different nodes. We're going from A to the other nodes, and we want to find the shortest route. Now, our diagram as it stands isn't much use to us. So if I was in the exam, what I'd be doing is I'd be crossing out all those kilobits per seconds numbers, and I'd be writing on there the cost that we've just worked out, just like I've done here. This makes it much easier to work out the shortest costs, because everything's now in the same units. So let's start by looking at the destination to get from A to B. The shortest way to get from A to B is actually by going from A to D to B. We only need to write down D to B in the route because we don't need to know the initial starting point. We know that, and the total cost is nine. And you can see that's significantly shorter than going from A to B directly, which is 20. C, the quickest way to C is directly from A, and that's 10, and so our route is just directly to C. D, same thing's true, we're going from A to D directly, it's given us a cost of five, that's the shortest route. If you look, we could go from A to B to D, that's 24. We could go from A to C to E to D, but we're looking at what, 32 there? So we've obviously got the shortest route. And then E, we get to E in the quickest way by going from A to D to E, which, which gives us a total cost of seven. Now let's have a look at what that looks like in the mark scheme, it's identical. One mark for each table row, showing the correct cost. So we're looking at a mark per row there, which is reasonably straightforward. This is from example assessment material from a few years ago. Now, unfortunately, what happened was every textbook manufacturer in the world literally copied this question as their example of this activity. You won't find a different example of calculating a forwarding table aside from in my previous slides. Because, again, forwarding tables are a little bit of an old-fashioned technology, so it's not the most up-to-date thing, and I think people are a bit reluctant to do it. But if you've seen any example of forwarding tables anywhere else, you've probably already seen this one. It's reasonably s simple. We need to work out a forwarding table for node A, calculating the costs to all other routes. So how do we get from A to A? Well, we go via A, and it's cost zero in the same way as the previous ones were. How about getting to B? Well, the shortest route is by going to C first, so A to C to B, and that gives us a cost of 5. Quickest way to get to C is by going straight to C, and that's A to C, which is 3. There are other ways of getting to C, but that's by far the easiest. Easiest way of getting to D, again, is by going to C first. A to C to D gives us 7, whereas if we tried A to B to D, we'd be talking, what, 13. E, then, is anyone that makes the forwarding tables seem a bit weird if we have a quick look at it to get to E the easiest way is going via C so A to C to D to E and that gives a total of 11. Now the forwarding table tends to get quite straightforward if you need to write one because essentially just writing which node do I go to first which one gives us the shortest route and in a more complicated forwarding table that would be different values unfortunately the diagram we've got and the diagram that was used as an example in all those exercise books is significantly shorter and therefore tends to be A in a bunch of C's. But then if you look back at mine, mine's broadly similar as well.
Let's look at the mark scheme for that. So we're getting a mark for the correct first, second and third row because they're all direct contacts. A mark for the fourth row because a bit more thinking involved there. And a mark for the fifth row on its own because that's a bit more eclectic. And the go-to one, in other words, where do we go to first to get here, is a weird thing to think about.